In Microsoft Fabric, there are several ways we can leverage to ingest data into the new SQL database. In this first of many end-to-end -end videos to come, I'm going to show you how we can use the Fabric Data Factory Data Pipeline resource combined with lookup, for each and copy data activities to migrate multiple tables from BigQuery to the new SQL database. If you're new to this channel, please click on the subscribe button and toggle on the bell icon so that I can be informed of new videos. Without much talking, let's get started. In this case, I've got this big query to SQL database fabric workspace with no fabric item created. I'm going to come to the console.cloud.mogo.com and I'm going to create a project which is basically a top level container that allows us to organize and manage resources such as data sets, tables and jobs. To create your project, just click on this drop down and then click on new project. Give a name to your project, click on create and in less than a minute, this is going to be provisioned. So I'm going to use the cornerstone analytics project already created. I'm going to click on this to expand the ID and I can see the queries, notebook, data canvases and so on and so forth. Now, I've got this fact and dimension tables that contains several tables such as the product, region, subcategory and the fact table. Now, to create data set, click on this ellipsis of your project ID and then click on create data set. Give a meaningful data set ID and then click on create at the bottom. This is going to be provisioned in less than a minute. And then to create your table within your data set, click on the ellipsis of your data set and then click on create table. And I can get data from the Google Cloud Storage, you can upload, you can get from the drive, from Amazon S3, even from Azure Blobs Storage. So once you're done, just give a meaningful name to your table and then click on Infa Schema and then click on Table. So you're going to see all your table provisioned like this underneath the data set. So this has been done in my case. Now, we will query this fact table. So I'm going to click on this ellipsis and then click on Query. So a new window is open for me. So I can provide either I want to see all the rows by using the star, or I can even provide the names of the column. Let's just see all the rows because I've got just a small rows in this fact table. So click on this. Now we have the top level namespace, which is the cornerstone analytics project name, and then we have the fact animation table data set, and then the name of the table is fact table. So we can see the other date to the sales column, which is absolutely fine. So we will go ahead and write a query to list all the tables within this data set. So I'm going to come here and write a simple query. So I'm going to perform select, and then I'm going to call what's, what's called um, table.name, property name, and then we want to get this from the cornerstone analytics so i'm going to wait for that press the tab key and the name of our data set is this and then we want to get the information schema of the table so i'm going to write that information underscore schema dot tables so this is going to actually read all the tables within this data set now in order for this to work get rid of this tilde and then run the code so we have the dim subcategory region product table which is absolutely cool. Now, we're going to suspend things for now and then come back to the app.powerbi.com. We want to quickly do two things. First, we want to provision SQL database and then we're going to create our data pipeline. So, click on this new item and then we want to search for SQL database. And I'm going to call this on big query database and then click on create. BigQuery database SQL database is now provisioned. Now we can go on and provision the data pipeline resource. So I can click on this new data pipeline connector and then I'm going to call this on BigQuery connector or BigQuery pipeline and then click on create. Okay, this is going to provision the data pipeline resource. Now I can use the graphical user interface, but I'm going to actually clear this and I want to use the canvas itself. So we can start building by organizing and moving our data. So first I want to click on these activities and then I need the lookup activity. Now this is needed in order to look up the names of the table from this data set of this constant analytics project name. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call this one lookup of tables and I will come to the settings. In the settings, I'm going to uncheck first row only and I want to click on connection. So I'm going to click on the more connection and then I want to search for big query. 
and then we need to provide the connection so i can stick with this google bigquery default connection name and then we're going to use the service account login as the authentication kind so for that we're going to provide a service account email and the service account json key file content now to get these two items i'm going to come back to this tab and i'll go to the iam and create a service account that's going to be associated with the project that is connected to analytics so in the iam i want to click on this and then click on service account for the purpose of this video, I've deleted all my service accounts, so I'm going to show you the whole thing. So click on create service account. I'm going to call this one a fabric, or you can call it whatever you like, fabric database. And then I can click on create and continue. Very importantly, we need to grant this service account access to our cornerstone analytics project. Otherwise, your pipeline will fail again and again. So I'm going to come back here and then click on the set a row and I want to choose the basic and editor is fine. So I'm going to click on continue. So the project is now able to access the service account, which is really important for authentication successfully. So I can disregard grant user access to service account, which is optional. This is not needed. We only need to provide this to the project. So click on done. So we're going to have this fabric database at Cornerstone Analytics iam.gserviceaccount.com i'm going to click on that and then we can see the details so i'm going to go to the keys and i want to create a key based on the json recommended key type so click on create and it's going to be created in my download i can open it up and then i can expand this notes part now i'm going to copy this part now, if you're probably not familiar with the BigQuery, you may be wondering which is the service account, but this is exactly the service account you can see, client email. So copy that, and then I'm going to come back here and come back to this, control V to paste. And then for the service account, JSON key file content. So I'm going to copy the whole thing now. So control A to select the whole thing, control C, tab alt and then I can control V to paste. Now, they allow this connection to be utilized with either on-premises or VNet data gateway doesn't apply. So click on connect. Okay, so we're able to connect to BigQuery, but for the sake of argument, I'm gonna click on test connection to be sure that we have connection established to the BigQuery via the service account. So once this is sorted, I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna use a Google SQL. So for this, I'm going to come back to this and copy this code and I'm going to control V. So I'm going to click on preview and we're going to see all the four tables that we have in this data set. So let's see it. Okay, brilliant. So we have the DIM, subcategory, region, product, and so on and so forth in this preview data. So our lookup is working fine. So I can click on this home, I can click on validate to check for errors, click on the run, save and run. And let's run this and see the output because we're going to need a value that is storing all the four tables in the key value pair of JavaScript object notation. So we're going to need that in our for each activity when we're trying to iterate or loop through all the tables coming from the lookup activities. Okay, so this succeeded. Now I can click on this out field and see something. So I'm going to expand base, and then we can see we have the table names, and then we have four counts. So these table names are stored inside this value. And if you know some JSON a little bit, we have the key value pairs. So these are the key, and these are the value. So we're going to need this value that we're going to pass inside our for each activity. So I'm going to close this and I can come up to the activities. I'm going to use the for each and I want to drag this across to this. I can rename this for each iteration. You can use whatever you like. And then I want to come to the settings and I'm going to click on items, click on the add dynamic content and then I want to get the lookup of the table. So we have the output of this lookup table that we've got in it. So I'm going to use dot value that is holding all the four tables so i can click on ok and that's how we can configure the four h now we want to go ahead and configure the copy activity within the four h so i can click on this edit to open it up i want to drag the copy data activity i can forget about the name and come to the source in the source i want to choose the connection which is going to be again the big query so i can set for big query and this is going to be detected automatically so i can click on connect and then okay uh, this is not a name, so this should be the name. Let me click on connect. 
Okay, so we are connected to the BigQuery Abiola tool. I can click again on test connection to be very sure we have the connection working. Brilliant. Now, we're going to use table this time around, but when I click on this table, I'm going to see the four table. Now, we're actually not picking a single table. We want to actually migrate for the four table. So what do we do? I'm going to click on this enter manually, and then we're going to provide the data set name and the table name. So for the data set name, don't forget this is known as fact and dimension table. So I can double click, control C. I'm going to come here. Oops, I can just Okay, paste inside this dynamic content, click OK, and then for the table name, I want to click on this add dynamic content, and then I want to get the item coming from the for each activity, and I'm going to use the property that we defined here, which is this table name of this BigQuery um, SQL. So I'm going to copy that, and I can paste. So it is really important to have this table name, which is associated with the BigQuery, okay? So I'm going to click on OK and I can click on the preview data and I can just give one of the tables. So let's just see dim or fact table. So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to type in fact table and I can click on OK and this should give us all the columns and all the rows inside that table. Okay, brilliant. So we can see the order date, year, month to the sales amount, sales column. So this is working fine. So we want to go ahead and configure the destination. So this is going to be the SQL database within the fabric. So click on this and I want to choose the more option. Now I want to pick from the new one leg catalog. So I'm going to scroll down and then I will click on the BigQuery database that we provisioned, which is this type. So click on that and in less than two seconds, this has been connected, which is absolutely fantastic. So for the table option, I'm going to click on this auto create table. And then I'm going to provide the name of the schema. I'm going to call this one um, sales. You can use whatever you like. And then for the table name, again, we're going to grab this dynamic content. Now, again, we're going to do dot table name, which is the property, again, coming from this script, this code here. So make sure you have the table name, otherwise you're going to get an error. So click OK, and then we can click on the home tab, we can click on validate, and no errors, we can click on the run. So I'm going to save and run this data pipeline, and this is going to be queued, and we're going to see what happened, whether we're going to have the successful migration or not. So we're going to see all this activity name generated. We're going to have the lookup of the tables. We're going to have the for each, and then we're going to have four copy activity, copy data activity, because we have four tables. So each of them will be lined up here, and we'll see what happens. Amazing. So the run succeeded. So we can see all our activity turning green, which is really impressive. So we have this for the lookup, and then we have this for the for each iteration, and then we have four copy data activity each for, for each of the table. So I can click on this and see the output. So I can expand this and I can see details, data read and data rating, the source peak and blah, blah. So these are all the information. Now let's quickly go to the BigQuery database SQL that we created. Now I'll click on this refresh and I can expand the database. I can go to the, I think the sales and I can go to the tables and there we go, which is amazing. So we have the DIM product, DIM region, subcategory and the fact table. So I can click on this. This is how we can migrate multiple tables from BigQuery to the new SQL database in Fabric. I trust you like this video. If you do, like, comment, share, and make sure you follow me for more videos. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.